In this video, we're going to complete example three. We're going to be adding and subtracting fractions by rationalizing the denominator first. So we'll start with question A. Looking at the first fraction, it has a denominator, which is the square root of three. The best way to rationalize this denominator is to multiply it by itself. So we're going to multiply this by the square root of three, remembering that we must multiply the numerator by the same thing. So what do we get when we do this? Well, root three times two will simply give us two root three. And for our denominator, root three times root three will simply give us the whole number of three. Looking at our second fraction here, you will notice that our denominator has two terms. In fact, we should put brackets around these two terms because we're multiplying this whole expression by something and we're going to multiply it by almost the exact same expression except instead of a minus sign we're going to have a plus sign we need to multiply the numerator by the exact same thing 3 plus the square root of 3 so we'll start with our numerator here 1 times 3 plus root 3 will give us 3 plus root 3 we're adding this fraction. And then looking at our denominator, we have the difference of two squares. So we focus on our two terms, the three and the root three. It's the same two terms in each set of brackets. And we square each of these terms. So if I square three, three squared, this will give me nine. And if I was to square the square root of three, squaring the square root of three, will give me 3. So we have two numbers here, we've got 9 and 3, and we're going to subtract these two numbers. So we will keep our first fraction the same as 2 root 3 over 3, and for our second fraction we're simply going to subtract the 3 from the 9. So the numerator remains as 3 plus root 3, and our denominator is 6. Now, in order to add our two fractions, we need the denominators to be the same. Our second denominator is 6, and our first denominator is 3. So we need to double the fraction on the left, so we get a denominator, which is a 6. Doubling basically means to times by 2. 2 root 3 times 2, well, 2 times 2 is 4, so we get 4 root 3 for our numerator. 3 times 2 is 6, so our denominator is 6. And then our second fraction just remains the same. Now that our denominators are the same, we can simply add together our numerators. So we have 4 root 3 to start with. And we're going to add this to our 3 plus root 3. And our denominator just stays the same as 6. Remembering that this root 3 here is actually the same as saying 1 root 3. So we have two like terms here. 4 root 3 plus 1 root 3. 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get 5 root 3. We also had our plus 3 here, which stays separate. And this will all be over 6. Okay, let's now move on to question B. Once again, we have two fractions. This time we're subtracting them. You'll notice that both sets of denominators have two terms. So we'll start with the first fraction. We're multiplying this whole expression here by something that is almost exactly the same. 2 root 10. Instead of plus, it's going to be minus 6. Remembering that we need to multiply the numerator by the exact same thing. So we'll start with our numerator here. 2 root 10 minus 6 times 1 simply gives us 2 root 10 minus 6. Okay, now looking at our denominator, we've got two terms, 2 root 10 and 6. It's the same two terms for each set of brackets. So I'm going to square these terms separately. So we have 2 root 10. What do I get when I square 2 root 10? Well, 
2 times 2 is 4. And when I square a square root, I go back to the original number of 10. So we get 4 times 10. That gives us 40. The other term we're squaring is the 6. So 6 squared is 36. So we have two numbers here, 40 and 36, and we're going to subtract them. 40 minus 36. All right, now looking at the second fraction, what are we going to multiply this fraction by? Well, focusing on our denominator, we're going to be multiplying by something that is almost the same expression, except instead of a minus, it's going to be a plus. And we need to multiply the numerator by the exact same thing. So what do we get when we multiply 1 by 4 plus root 10? Well, quite simply, we get 4 plus root 10. For our denominator, we're going to square our two terms, the 4 and the root 10. It's the same two terms we have in each set of brackets. So if I square the 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and if I square the square root of 10, when I square a square root, I go back to the original number of 10. So my two numbers are 16 and 10, and I'm going to subtract them. 16 minus 10. Okay, so looking at the first fraction, 40 minus 36 is 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 root 10 minus 6 over 4. For my second fraction, 16 minus 10 is 6. So I'm going to have 4 plus root 10 over 6. All right, we're at the point where we want to make the denominators the same. Most people would look at this and try and make the denominators 12. They would try to double the 6 and triple the 4. I'm going to take a different avenue for this. I'm going to start by simplifying this fraction. And the reason I'm doing this is I noticed I have even numbers here, a 2, a 6, and a 4. When they're all even, you can divide them all by 2. I can divide my denominator by 2, and I can divide my numerator by 2 as well. So starting with our numerator, if I have 2 root 10 and I divide it by 2, it's just going to be 2 divide 2, which is 1, and then the root 10 stays the same. Looking at the 6, 6 divide 2 is 3, so we simply get minus 3. And for our denominator, 4 divide 2 is 2. And then our second fraction remains the same. Now the reason this is a good move is because now I simply need to multiply the first fraction by 3 in order to make the denominator 6. So we times both the top and the bottom by 3. Technically the numerator is in brackets, so I'm multiplying the whole expression by 3, as I did before when I divided by 2. 3 times 1 root 10 will simply give me 3 root 10, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we get minus 9. Our denominator is 6, and our second fraction remains the same, 4 plus root 10 over 6. Okay, now that we have the same denominator, we can combine the fractions. Remembering we're subtracting. So we have 3 root 10 minus 9. So 3 root 10 minus 9. And we're subtracting the whole expression 4 plus root 10. That means it's actually in brackets. So we're going to get minus 4. Minus 4. Now this is plus root 10, but we're subtracting it. It actually becomes minus root 10. Now I've run out of room here, so I have to do something that I'm not particularly keen to do, but I'm having to work upwards in my working. So 3 root 10 minus root 10, and that's just 1 root 10. 3 minus 1 is 2, so I get 2 root 10. And then minus 9 minus 4 is minus 13. And my denominator is 6. 
Now, because the working was a little funny, I'm going to put a rectangle around my final result to highlight where it is. And I have now simplified question B. Anyway, that concludes our video on example three. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.